Uh, welcome to the session 3 on uh, financial risk management. Today we will discuss about the remaining topics on ERM, Enterprise Risk Management. Enterprise Risk Management, the, the, the responsible departments, responsible uh, participants for Enterprise Risk Management include the Board of Directors, which we call it as Tone at the Top, Senior Management, Trading Room Management in the case of Dealing Room, Operations, Risk Management Team, and of course Finance. All these managers are independent, not influenced by the management. So here the objective is to have the efficiency in the business operations, compliance with applicable laws and regulations, and a fair financial reporting. The company has to reports has to report its financial reports uh, without any fraudulent information. And all the activities of the business organization are to be carried out effectively and efficiently. Then the last important point is that the company has to meet with the compliance. It has to maintain the compliance with the applicable laws and regulations. So the objectives of risk management include the efficiency and effectiveness of the business operations. So we see that the efficiency and effectiveness of the business operations continuously improve. So that what happens is the quality improves, the cost is controlled and the output, the output is higher in terms of the input. This we call it as productivity. Means with a low input, we can expect high output. It can be a service, it can be a production, it can be whatever. Efficiency and effectiveness of the business operations. The second important objective of risk management is the fair financial reporting. No fraudulent information is included in the financial reporting. The third and very important point is the objective is maintaining a compliance. So compliance with the applicable laws and regulations so that the company will not face any legal risks, regulatory risk. So companies operations and can be carried out you know, efficiently without having any impact of legal issues. Here, um, the various components which we need to take, you know, the um, in the risk management process include corporate governance. To what extent we can, you know, um, digest the risk. Product line management, accountability for the risk. Portfolio management, complete review of the risk involved in the portfolio. The strategies in the risk. Analytics, quantification of the risks, data technology, so that we can use, you know, the integration in the in the data for, with the risk management and uh, stakeholder management. Here, in the risk management process, we follow five steps. Steps begin with risk appetite framework. A risk appetite framework defines that to what extent we can afford a risk. To what extent we can accept, we can accept the risk. Some companies are risk averse. Risk averse means these companies do not accept or do not tolerate any kind of risk. Means they want risk free activities but it is not possible to have the complete risk-free activities therefore what we need to do is to what extent we can accept the risk the acceptable limits then once you define establish risk appetite framework identify the risks various risks once we identify the risks we need to quantify them the what is the impact of the you know the risk 
based on that we can take and you can maintain a strategy the strategy can be to avoid the risk transfer the risk or mitigate the risk or assuming the risk which is called accepting the risk once you maintain a strategy for responding to the risk we need to see the you know perform but the we need to monitor the performance of what risk factors what risk management techniques tools policies we used on continual basis based on this we may have to you know include some more policies to have more effective risk management therefore again it continually monitored to know that whether the risk appetite framework is effectively working or not any policies and procedures are you know ineffective they are to be discarded by int introducing new policies and procedures so here uh, in the risk appetite framework what we discussed was in the previous session what we discussed was what are the challenges we have here in risk appetite factor quantitative and qualitative factors uh, accounting versus economic exposures economic exposure means the amount the amount of notional payments what the stakeholders expect if not invested in the company the time horizon as the time is longer the risk will be heavier and the consideration of existing profiles risk capacity to what extent we can tolerate the risk attitude of the business attitude of the management towards the risk management the flexibility in the risk management to accept or not to accept the risk the best practices we need we use in a risk management process include clear statement of risk appetite to what extent we can accept the risk once you once you identify the risk you need to take an action to respond to the risk but it will the response will have the response will have some cost so what is the cost and what is the benefit from this activity which will mitigate the risk to mitigate the risk you have an activity a control activity in which you have some cost involved to get certain benefit so obviously when cost is greater than the benefit what we receive it is of no use implementing this policy unless unless it is a qualitative factor qualitative factor means there is no monetary thing involved in that but it may lead to the you know compliance effect say for example uh, we one of the activities in our business organization is ignored because it involves some cost um, by having this uh, activity you may not get any benefit but it is you know uh, it will affect the compliance so when we say compliance it is a legal issue though there is no benefit though there is no benefit still we need to have this control yeah communication in a plain language so the best practices in implementing risk appetite framework include communication once you implement controls the next process is like information and communication of the risk management to the various department information and communication so it should be clearly uh, you know communicated to the lower level managers the participants in a, in such a way that they you know understand and you know follow this from time to time so communication of limits to what extent we can you know determine the limits and the reasons for limits okay different reasons like a uh, 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 a manager a manager can communicate certain um, issues with his team but make sure that the, that this communicate this information should be within the department though the other department working for the same company it should not be this close to the other department responsibility of risk 
so the proper delegation should be should take place for the responsibility of the risk like unit manager this manager can be in a trading room to what extent he can resp give responsibility to his subordinate and he can give a, a delegate this responsibility to his executives so the responsibility for risk should also be clearly mentioned in the uh, 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 risk appetite you know framework transaction approval so individual transactions here are to be approved by the authorized person to what extent an approval takes place say for example a company issues a vendor check a vendor check up to fifty thousand dollars can be signed by say the finance manager of the company say for example this is a control in the company a check to the vendor can be signed by a finance manager he can approve it but whereas the check goes beyond like five hundred thousand it goes half a million and more uh, uh, a finance manager and the CFO of the company should sign so both signatory should be there on the space of the check so this is what we communicate to the banker that if any check goes beyond 500,000 it should have a real signatory whereas if uh, the the amount uh, you know is beyond 1 million this has to be signed by CEO of the company so different uh, authorization levels for the approval of transaction should be implemented risk culture risk culture in a company we have thousands of employees thousands of them employees so the the risk uh, what to what extent the company accept the risk to what extent the company does not tolerate the risk that depends upon the values and behavior in employees so the employees behavior and attitude will also have an impact on the risk their carelessness, their attentiveness, okay, their you know the understanding of the communication about the risk, uh, you know, the policies and procedures. So the system, the system of values and behavior in employees will have an impact on risk. The ability of an entity to exit execute risk appetite. No framework is directly impacted by the risk culture. Risk culture means it is employees no response. So you have vice versa. To what extent the organization uh, accept the risk or tolerate the risk or does not tolerate the risk, and to what extent the risk culture risk culture we have in the company. So we have um, it's like environment, the philosophy of the working style of the company. So, if we have a strict management that we do not accept uh, any kind of risk, then that will have an impact here. Otherwise, if we make the rules and break the rules, it will have a bad impact on the risk. Identification of the risks, individual risks, include the quantifiable risks. Quantifiable risk can be a credit risk. Um, interest rate risk, liquidity risk, and market risk. Here, quantifiable risks we are identifying that the possibility of default default by the counterparty can be our customer. Okay, so what happens when you lend money to our customer and it becomes default? So it is called a credit risk. To what extent we can recover when a customer becomes default? What is the settlement amount? What is the loss of that? What type of risk we, you know, what amount of risk we face due to this credit risk? Need to identify this. Interest rate risk. The movements in the interest rates will also have an impact on our risk. That may be favorable that may be unfavorable favorable is okay fine but if if unfavorable movement takes place in interest rates that will have an impact both on assets as well as liabilities assets deposits loans etc liquidity risk due to 
due to you know the shortage of liquidity due to the shortage of liquidity position in our company will not be able to meet our current obligations it may it may you know spoil the reputation of the company so it may it may give bad impact on the operations of the company as well as the reputation of the company it can be a, a, a cash related it can be a inventory related risk market risk market risk is also known as systematic risk it is it it takes place due to the price changes or volatility in the financial markets that is due to say interest rates equity debt and equity foreign currencies commodity rates etc the market risk is common to everyone that's the reason why we call it a systematic risk which cannot be diversified quasi quantifiable risk include operational risk which is related to our core operations of the business it, it can be a you know the human resources related or you know defective or ineffective controls fraud within the company or you know lot of human errors due to you know uh, due to negligence or improper training then technology failures any natural disasters no precautions are taken to to face the natural disasters come under operational risks model risk the business model may go wrong sometimes we have a policy business policy which may misfire legal and regulatory risk if the company does not follow the compliance so the company may face um, risk of lawsuits and uh, regulatory issues cancellation of the licenses etc business risk operation risk is almost same like unexpected drops in the revenues it's a company related due to due to the obsolescence in the product or uh, innovation lack of innovation in the products the sales may go down or due to you know liquidity we are not giving credit more than 45 days say for example whereas our customers are getting 90 days credit from our competitor or the costs increase in the cost due to external factors like input cost can be material labor etc or due to you know changes in supply and demand a strategic risk when the strategy a failure in the strategy and the business model reputation risk reputation risk may be because of you know the media issues any anything goes wrong then that will go into media and the company may face problems now quantify the risk how do you quantify the risk we use various uh, you know uh, uh, calculations to quantify the risk using some you know uh, calculations like standard deviation value at risk um, expected shortfall and uh, also we consider the time period the confidence level estimation method the calculations in quantifiable risk exposure will have a separate section for this we'll discuss in detail in that section strategy what strategy we maintain to to respond to the risk the strategy can be applied in avoiding the risk or we transfer the risk or we may implement some controls to mitigate the risk or we may think that this risk is very common and low as compared to the other activities and also the cost is greater than the benefit what we receive even after having controls effectively so we have to accept the risk in that case that is called assuming the risk so we develop a strategy to respond to the risk by avoiding or transferring mitigating or assuming the risk say for example abstain from the market or counterparty practice so what happens here it is it is we are coming out of we are coming out of a particular activity we are coming out of means we are just you know uh, 
entering into the risk free area by taking an, an action like board rejects management request to relax underwriting standard to allow loan underwriting without proof stated proof of stated income so to to avoid the risk what we need to do is we we sometimes what happens we say reject management request to relax underwriting standard so we we have to see that you know the income status the income status before we we give some credit to the customer so that we can avoid the risk the income status is to be uploaded by some you know underwriter so underwriter will verify it we will pay certain amount to the underwriter he will verify the income status of the client then only we can grant a credit so there are limitations may prevent entity from entering into profitable market counterparty relationship you no know, or practices etc there are some advantages there are some limitations transfer it is nothing but shifting of the risk from one party to the another we transfer the risk to some other party there are parties who accept the risk and you know the income as well so they share we share the revenue as well as the risk example the transfer transfer an entity transfer the risk of counterparty a to b via swapping the credit default so what happens here a and b share the revenue generated from a client by swapping the risk as well so credit default risk is also swapped but in many cases you know when you you know transfer the uh, business to some other party it may not be a a good advantage to our company so even counterparty becomes default it's a heavy loss to us mitigate the risk it is nothing but uh, we take policies and we design policies and procedures which will help us to reduce the risk mitigation means reduction reduction in the risk any likelihood of the occurrence of an unfavorable event is to be identified and a policy is to be developed to mitigate the risk in that case in that case the example is like interest rate risk by entering into hedging contracts blocking email sent to external email addresses so what we do is here we have a of you know a framework for not to not to go this mails to the external parties okay so you'll have a mail server we will avoid any kind of suspicious may outgoing mails from our you know parties or staff members limitations derivatives are very complex can be costly than the benefit what we receive yeah so there are some you know uh, activities which in which the cost can be more than the benefit what we receive assuming the risk assuming the risk is nothing but accepting the risk to some extent to some extent why because these risks are very common acceptable level not in huge amounts etc example include board accepts management requests to relax underwriting standards and forecast future losses that are used in the calculation of interest capital buffers so if if we have a capital of say for example 5 million dollar we want to maintain now a 6 million dollar we may lose interest on this 1 million dollars but that is quite natural and it has to be accepted not to have any fluctuations in this but what i mean to say is here 1 million capital can be costly that's a limitation but still not to have any issues in the you know uh, um, maintaining the in, uh, inadequate capital we increase our capital from 5 million to 6 million 
we develop the policies and procedures it doesn't mean that we can avoid the risk or we can guarantee that there will be no risk only we can assume we can you know assure that the risk can be at least mitigated risk can be only mitigated when we have an effective you know monitoring process in the company so we need to monitor the policies and procedures what we implemented it is nothing but a post audit once we implement the the policies and procedures we need to have a post audit to see the efficiency of the controls which we implemented in the risk management process so the last uh, step in the risk management process and which is continually applied is monitoring so it is not a static process it's a recurring process risk management is a recurring process it's not a static process it has to be continually monitored yeah so once initially set continually monitored will come to know whether they are effective or ineffective ineffective discard effective continue new new controls are needed okay recommend to the management so they are to be updated as needed also monitoring determines if risk management activities are consistent with the risk appetite or not if they are not consistent as i said they are to be discarded otherwise they simply they will be costlier deviations in monitoring suggest that risk appetite to what extent we can accept the risk and risk mitigation process from time to time when you review it will come to know that whether the risk appetite framework is enough or not we have to increase the risk uh, acceptance of the risk or we can still further reduce the risk monitoring methods can be back testing we'll discuss in detail and confidence interval levels like 90% 95% like and stress testing to what extent we can you know or to what extent we can identify the controls but there are some you know causes there are some reasons for the failure in risk management when the management is not concerned about certain risks and it's not very strict about certain risks then it is nothing but accepting the risk because you are ignoring it any known risk is ignored it is nothing but accepted risk is accepted and due to wrong judgment the wrong you know uh, policies may be implemented if the judgment is wrong the the um, controls will be implemented but they may not be effective controls because of the wrong judgment the risk management may fail sometimes risk may may not be identified it is hidden not identified so even though you are very keen on risk management because of because of the risk unidentified so you may we may not have you know enough controls to ident- uh, mitigate the risk this is uh, the topic on erm enterprise risk management we'll see in the next session on the other topics have a good day